Hi, I'm Churchill Librarian Sherry Yannick. Today we are going to read Nothing But Trouble, the story of Althea Gibson. And this is written by Sue Stauffacher and illustrated by Greg Couch. I think you'll like this book, especially if you like um, people that sometimes do things a little bit differently and you want an inspirational story about an amazing athlete, an amazing um, woman, a black girl and black woman who has really been a trailblazer for herself, for the sport. And I think you will absolutely love this book. Nothing but trouble. Althea Gibson was the tallest, wildest tomboy in the history of Harlem. Everybody said so. Her mama said, just give that child a nickel for a loaf of bread and see what happens. Soon as she catches sight of those boys playing stickball, my bread is long forgotten. Her daddy said, that girl stays out so late playing basketball, she doesn't even come home some nights. Her teacher said, half the time she doesn't even return from recess. I'd see a lot more of Althea if I taught lessons on the playground. The policeman said, She's a fast runner, all right, but you can't make a sport out of Nick and sweet potatoes. That's against the law. They all said, Althea Gibson, you're nothing but trouble. Althea didn't care what they said. She knew she would be somebody someday. Somebody big like Charlie Parker or Sugar Ray. In the meantime, just one thing to care about in this world, the game. Give her a stick, a paddle, a hoop, or a ball, and Althea Gibson was good to go. Buddy Walker was the play leader down on 143rd Street where Althea lived. At night, he was a musician in one of Harlem's society orchestras. When Buddy watched Althea play paddle tennis, he didn't see nothing but trouble. No, sir, except maybe for the poor rubber ball. What he saw in Althea was pure possibility. Times were hard, but Buddy scrounged up enough money to buy Althea a stringed tennis racket at a secondhand store. It didn't look like much next to the big wooden paddle Althea normally used for street tennis. What do you think she should do? Should she play with it? What do you think is going to happen? After she practiced a little, Buddy asked a friend at the Harlem River Tennis Courts to play a few sets with her. As Althea covered the court, Buddy forgot all about the wild tomboy who roamed the streets of Harlem. What Buddy saw was music in the way she moved. Buddy wasn't the only one. Other players stopped their games to get a look at her. Althea saw the other players watching her. It felt good, made her feel like she was somebody. Althea, Buddy said after the game, trying to contain his excitement. This is Juan Seto, a friend of mine. We have an idea. Juan Seto belonged to the Cosmopolitan, the ritziest tennis club in Harlem. All the Sugar Hill Society people belong there. You play tennis here, Buddy told Althea. You can make something of yourself. After the members of the club saw what Althea could do, Buddy and Juan convinced a few of them to pay for lessons with the club's one-armed tennis pro, Fred Johnson. Fred tried to improve Althea's ways on and off the court. When, while Althea loved playing a new game on a big fancy court, she didn't like being told how to act. I think she's not alone in that feeling. I think other people feel the same way. They don't like people telling them what to do. Never said I wanted to be a fine lady, she complained to Buddy. Fortunately for her, the members of the Cosmopolitan didn't like her wild ways either. They shook their heads and whispered, nothing but trouble, that one. Mrs. Rhoda Smith was a fine society lady who bought Althea her first tennis outfit, so she looked like all the other players in the court. She made time to play regularly with Althea and to instruct her in the polite rules of the sport. Now Althea 
When a loose ball rolls onto the court, you don't just bat it out of the way in any old direction. You send it back to the player it belongs to. That's how it's done in court tennis. Ah, oh, Mrs. Smith, Althea muttered. Can't we just play tennis? Buddy tried to explain the importance of keeping cool. You've got to decide, Althea. Are you going to play your game? Or are you going to let the game play you? When I go to the jazz club, I play like a tiger, but I wear a tuxedo. Hmm. Hmm, Althea said, throwing her tennis racket on the ground. I don't fit in with these rich society folks. I'd rather punch someone's li somebody's lights out at Stillman's gym. Whoa. Buddy said, Althea, I still believe. A year later, Althea was in her first real tennis tournament. She played well, but she lost in the finals to Nana Davis. After I beat her, Nana told the reporters, she headed straight to the grandstand without bothering to shake my hand. Some kid had been laughing at her and she was going to throw him out. I tell you, Althea Gibson is nothing but trouble. And you can see Althea Gibson running to the stands right here. And there is Nana with her hand out. It took a long time, a good long time, but slowly Althea learned that wanting to slug her opponent as soon as she started losing her match made her a worse tennis player than if she kept her cool. Hmm. I think others of us might notice this in our lives as well, right? If you keep your cool, it makes things easier. With Buddy's help, Althea realized she could dress up in white and act like a lady and still beat the liver and lights out of the ball. Tennis changed Althea all right, but just as importantly, ever since Miss Gibson rallied in the second set of the women's finals, she has proven to be nothing but trouble for seasoned U.S. and world champ Louise Brown. Althea changed tennis. She did it, ladies and gentlemen. She did it. Althea Gibson has won the championship here at Wimbledon's Center Court. With that, Althea Gibson became the first African-American man or woman ever to compete and win the coveted Wimbledon, Wimbledon Cup, long considered the highest honor in tennis. And she never forgot the man who saw the champion of the world in the wildest tomboy in Harlem. Tonight is the conclusion of a long and satisfying journey. It all started on one of New York's play streets when Buddy Walker, a play street supervisor, said, Althea, I believe you could become a good lawn tennis player. With those words, he handed me my first tennis racket. Tonight I thank Buddy Walker for a most satisfying victory. So again, this is nothing but trouble, the story of Althea Gibson. I think it's a really great story, really inspirational about something such an amazing athlete has done for, um, for her life, kind of learning a little bit about how she could take that trouble and make it trouble, not for her, but trouble for the others in the tennis court and trouble for that ball. Um, I hope you really enjoyed this and thanks for listening. Keep on reading.